Hey, it's Cliff, and today I'm going to talk to you about my first failed retirement. And hopefully this information could be useful for someone who also wants to retire early. Uh, just give them some things to kind of watch out for when it comes to early retirement. So I think what a lot of people do when they're focusing on FIRE is they calculate their budget. Typically, they're looking at what they're spending every month. They're kind of looking at it from a main point objective, if that makes sense to you. Um, let me kind of break it down what I mean. Typically, you're going to hold up your budget. You're going to say, OK, what am I spending here? OK, I got my rent. I got my power, I got my whatever, my car payment, that kind of thing. Maybe you want to pay off your car before you retire and knock that bill out. But you know, you, you typically have your staples in your budget that you're always going to pay for. So you're kind of looking at things like, okay, this is how much I spend on groceries. This is how much I spend on gas. You know, maybe in retirement, we can kind of estimate maybe that'll be less, maybe it'll be more, kind of go from there. And you, you build up this number that you believe is actually going to be your retirement number. But what I found in this first retirement is just using that estimate was not really good enough for you to retire on. I found myself having a whole host of outside expenses that I didn't really expect coming up. Um, additional things that would push my budget up every month to the point that I was exceeding my fire number. And, you know, I, I think I just could have prepared a little bit more. And that's why I chose to go back to work. Ultimately, the decision to go back to work was based off of me wanting to buy a house, figure if I can aggressively pay off a house that's going to take rent completely out of my budget. There's going to be other expenses that go into it, like property taxes and insurance and just everything that comes with owning a house, repairs. You know, we live in a hurricane prone state. So obviously that's going to be something that's going to reflect in our budget, not only in, in insurance, but in repairs as well. But really what this video is about is the little things that added up. I think... A lot of people are putting into their budget, okay, I paid off my car, but eventually I'm gonna have to buy another car, so I'm still scheduling in a car payment into this budget that's gonna keep me secure, I'll be able to buy a new car when this one breaks down, yada yada, everything's gonna be okay. But what I found was the little things is really what affects your budget when it comes to being retired and not having an income. And what I mean by that is things like birthday gifts. You know, you don't typically factor that into a monthly budget. It's not something you typically think about, but it's still going to be an expense that you have to pay for, even though you're not working anymore and you don't have an income. So that's something you got to think about. There was additional things that I forgot too, like uh, tires on a car, oil changes. Maybe I didn't really factor that in every month. Um, and just little things, all of these little things seem to add up and they really push your budget very high. And that's not even factoring in those oddball expenses that you find that you you need something like a table. Like Just for instance, a table, let's say you, I don't know, your dining room table falls apart and now you need another one. That's an expense that is going to come out of your budget and you're going to have to factor it in somehow to pay for this. I think initially I was being really naive to just go through my budget and say, okay, I pay my bills, I pay rent, I pay my electricity, this is what I, I spend on all this stuff, that's what I need as a fire number. That's a very amateur way of looking at trying to retire early. And honestly, it's not so bad because in the beginning you're just trying to compound money and hit that number. It's more goal setting than anything, but now that I actually tried it out in practice, it's not realistic and you're probably going to need more in retirement than you actually think you do. Because again, who wants to be the asshole who retired and now you don't have money for birthday gifts? Are you just going to stop give, giving people birthday gifts because you're retired? No one's going to accept that. You're going to be a jerk. Are you not going to put tires on your car? Of course you need tires. You know, thing, bad things happen. So you have to budget well above the numbers that you're probably thinking of just to get by. And generally how I'm thinking of doing this, you have to save, you know, I do a lot of index fund investing among other things, but generally that's what I'm looking for is having an index fund number that I can pull out 4% of that and pay for everything. But it brought me to this scenario, okay, what I thought was my budget maybe isn't my budget because there's all of these expenses on the outside of my budget that it's really hard to estimate for. You know, you don't you don't know when you're gonna pay for this stuff, right? You don't know when you need a new table or a new couch or just 
whatever you need that is kind of random. I guess birthdays you can kind of plan for. Um, but maybe you meet new friends and now you have more birthdays, you know, who knows? It's just these outside expenses that you didn't plan for. How do you estimate for these things? So me being an Excel guy, I just kind of went down, like I said, put all my main expenses there. That's not the way to do it. I think probably a better way to go about this is to use some kind of finance app. I know this isn't a sponsored video. I'm not going to go into, go buy this finance app. No, that's not it. I think for a very long time, a lot of people use Mint. That was a great finance tracking app. It was free, but they shut down. So there's there's others out there. I, people use a... You need a budget. Personally, I really like Monarch, but that one does cost some money. I think it's like 50 bucks a year and probably will increase next year because of Mint dying. But that's a really good one. I think the probably the better way to go about tracking how much money you need is to look at the total of what you spent last year. And that's really going to be what you need. That's going to have all of those outlier expenses like we moved all of my moving expenses are going to be in there so it's going to be a huge number you know so it's going to be a bigger more realistic number to target what your actual lifestyle is like instead of just putting everything down on an excel spreadsheet or even just going through all of your credit card and bank statements and looking at your bills i think actually having a finance tracking app is more realistic because it's going to include all the things like restaurants that you went out to and just weird expenses that you're not typically tracking when you're thinking, oh, this is what I need in retirement. Now, some of my expenses did go down. I spent a lot less in gas, you know, car maintenance probably wouldn't be that much because I don't drive a lot, that kind of thing. So there's variables there that are kind of flexible, but it's, it's not going to change anything about buying tires and that being an $800 expense that you weren't planning for. So I think what I'm going to do for the next two years or so is track what I spent for the year and that should be a better estimate of what I need you know with the with the loose budget you know we go out to eat we do all these things that's what I'll need because you want to maintain the same lifestyle right you want to you don't want to retire and say oh I'm not going out to eat anymore or I'm not gonna go shopping for whatever you know I'm not gonna participate in my hobbies as much because I don't have an income no you need to plan for those things and I think when most people actually sit down and they look at how much they're spending and how much they're saving for retirement, they're going to realize that they don't have enough, especially if they're going to retire early. And that just brings up a new can of worms because if you retire early and you make it to, let's say, old age, but you find out you don't have enough money and you want to go back to work, you probably can't because you're too old. So it's anxiety ridden problems that just uh, come at you that I think if you do better planning now, you could probably just take care of it now. So yeah, I'm going to look at the finance tracking app. I'm going to compare probably over two years, kind of get a feel of how much am I actually spending? Because at this point, with me moving around and all the different expenses, I don't know what I actually need. I'm sure I've dealt with some lifestyle inflation as well, which, you know, is not good for trying to hit a fire number, but that's reality. That's, pro that's probably just what happened. When I first started trying to get to fire, I think I was only targeting like 40K. Uh, just, you know, me as a single guy, 40K, I thought I could just quit a job and be fine by then. But I don't, I don't think that's realistic anymore. Not, not quite. Definitely lifestyle inflation, but inflation in general has affected that number. So I don't, I don't think that's the way to go. So what I want to know in the comments of what are the things that you think you're missing in retirement? What are those expenses that are going to set you over the edge? You really have to plan for what are those things that are really going to mess up your budget? Um, let me know.